Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Church Online tonight for Wednesday night. And I'm going to share a message with you tonight. Uh, In fact, I may stay with this for several Wednesday nights about walking in the will of God. You know, I think sometimes as a pastor, um, there are so many subjects that need to be taught and need to be shared that sometimes we kind of overlook some things. And I think I've possibly overlooked this some and because it's so critical and so important for you to understand as a, as a born-again child of God that God's got a plan for your life. And there is a, a perfect will for your life. There is a place where God wants you to walk in your life. And to be honest with you, a lot of time we don't even consider the will of God or what does God want. We just kind of go with what we want and hope that God's, God's walking with us. And, um, and a lot of times walking in the will of God is just being sensitive to, to the Lord and letting Him guide you. But there are times when you need to know emphatically the will of God. And if you don't, you're going to lose confidence in where you are and what God wants for your life. So let me read you this scripture in Hebrews chapter 10, just a couple of verses here. Therefore, in verse 35, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Now notice what it says. Don't cast away your confidence, which has great reward. So, there, there is a place where there is a confidence that you can build in your life. Now listen to the next part, verse 36. For you have need of endurance that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promises. In other words, confidence is connected to the will of God for your life and what God wants for your life and, and His plan for your life and, 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 and just basic everyday things that, that arise regarding the promises of God. Because, look, God, it's God's will, and I'm going to show you this today from the Word. It's God's will for, 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 him to, for provision to be in your life. It's God's will for healing for your life. Obviously, it's God's will for you to have eternal life. And so there are things that you need to understand about the will of God that will help you live in the will of God every day in your life and that, so that you don't lose confidence. Because if you get out there on your own and then you need to pray or you need God to work in your life and you know, I'm not sure I've been in the will of God or what, if, it is, if this is the will of God or I don't know, I'm not sure, you'll lose confidence. And if you do, then uh, the promises that belong to you are going to slip past you. So let me read you this scripture, and I think it'll help you in 1 John chapter 5. And this is something that's really been stirring in my own heart. Listen to this. 1 John 5 verse 14 says this. Now this is the confidence that we have in Him. All right? Here's where our confidence is. This is where our confidence lives. If we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if He hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. Now, the problem with this scripture is this. A lot of people have taken this scripture and, and they say, well, you just ask, and if it's the will of God, it'll come to pass. There's no confidence in that. Confidence is in knowing the will of God. This is the confidence that we have that if we ask anything according to His will. So we go in asking according to His will, and when you ask according to His will, and you have confidence that it's the will of God, then you know, it said, I like the way it says, you know He hears you. And whatever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we've asked of Him. So the good news is that if you can find out what the will of God is about something, and listen to what I'm saying, and you can understand the will of God about anything, 
it is a, a powerful, powerful uh, place of confidence knowing the will of God. I can, if I know the will of God about something and I need God to act, uh, act in my life to do something that I, that, that I can't do, something that I need to, Him to do, and I ask Him and I know it's the will of God, I know it's the plan of God, I know it's what God wants for my life. Now listen to me. I can have confidence then because I know He heard me. Now, God hears everything with an audible, but there's a different listening, a different hearing when you're asking according to His will. And He hears you, and if you know that He hears you, how do you know that He hears you? Because you ask according to the will of God. Then you know that you have the petitions that you've asked of Him. So there's a powerful confidence here knowing the will of God. And, and to be honest with you, uh, there have been times in my life where I have faced adversity. I faced struggles. I mean, even pastoring the church, especially in the early days when there was, were onslaughts of, act, of, of, of uh, attacks by the enemy against the church and, and against Becky and I and, and, and our family. And, and we're thinking, are we really supposed to do this? But we knew it was the will of God. And so that gave us confidence to keep going and to endure and to see the promises of God come to pass. So you can't take the will of God lightly and say, oh, I'm probably in the will of God. Well, probably is not good enough. You need to know the will of God and you need to have confidence in the will of God. Otherwise, you're not going to, you're not in a time, especially in times of difficulty or adversity, you're not going to know how to react how to respond. But it, it's such a great source. Listen to what Colossians chapter uh, 1, verse 9 and 10 say. I think this will really help you. Paul said this. He said in verse 9, For this reason we also, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you. Now listen to this. And ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. See, once, you, once Paul knew that if I can get them to be filled with the knowledge of the will of God in every area, and the more the better, and I can get them filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, then they're going to be in a great place to walk fruitfully, <clears throat> to increase in the knowledge of God, and really, the, it says here, walk worthy of the Lord. So, now let me add something to this, okay? Listen. It's not enough just to know the will of God. Notice what Paul said here. He said, I pray that you would be filled with the knowledge of His will. Now listen to this. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. In other words, you have to know the will of God in wisdom and in spiritual understanding. Now let me explain this to you, and I think this will help you. Uh, wisdom, and, and there are actually two words for wisdom. One of them is a specific wisdom, like a, a, a wisdom to uh, ask the right question, that type of thing. But there's another word, wisdom, and that's what this one is. And, it, and the word here is the overall plan or intentions or purposes, really insight into the true nature of something. And I'm going to explain this to you, so just hang with me. So the, the, to have wisdom means you understand the overall plan, or the intentions and purposes. And then the second thing is spiritual understanding. Now, spiritual understanding is the ability to understand and apply God's wisdom regarding His will to your course of life. You got it? Now, let me explain it to you. I'll use healing as an example. Okay? 
If you study the Word of God, and I'm going to get into this in a little detail in a minute, but if you study the Word of God, you will find out that it is the will of God for you to be healed. It's not the will of God for you to be sick. The thief comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus himself took our infirmities, bore our sicknesses. By his stripes, we were healed. So healing belongs to us. It's the will of God for you to be healed. And again, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a minute. All right. So you have to understand, first of all, that if you are sick, that, that you have to understand that God's plan is for healing. But then you have to have the spiritual understanding to apply that to your life. You have to know how to operate by faith. You have to know and understand from a spiritual standpoint what's going on in regard to you needing healing in your body. Because there may be things in your life that, that are causing this to happen. Unforgiveness, you know, not walking in love, lots of different things can cause this. And if you have the spiritual understanding to apply rightly what God has done for you, then you've got wisdom and spiritual understanding. And they both are very, very important. And I don't want to, I may talk about this in detail uh, later. Okay. So the point is, and it's very important that Paul himself prayed that you would have the knowledge of the will of God for your life. And you'd have it with wisdom, and you'd have it with spiritual understanding. In other words, you could not just know the will of God, you could apply it to your life, and to your life set, or your life focus, or your life direction. And God can help you with that and show you that in your life. Because it may be the will of God for you to do something, and, and you know by revelation that it's the will of God to do something, but if you don't know how to do it, how are you going to get there? That's where spiritual understanding comes in. So, there, and I'm going to back up here and go this direction. So listen, there, there, are, there is a twofold application of the will of God for your life. And if you know these, you're going to have confidence, okay? And, and, and this is where kind of sometimes people get a little off and get a little, I'm not sure, which means you're losing your confidence, okay? So listen carefully. First of all, it is it is, all, uh, it is always good, and God's will is always going to be found in His Word for, for humanity, for every person, okay? Now, now there is a God's will for your personal life, in other words, direction for your life, but there are lots of things that we know are the will of God because God's Word promises and tells us that it is. Listen to what Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 55, beginning in verse uh, 8. And I think, you'll, I think this will help you understand this. Listen to what, what, what it says. Verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than than your ways, and my thoughts, than your thoughts. Now listen to this. For as the rain comes down from heaven, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Now listen to this. So shall my word be, that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it will accomplish what I please. So in other words, God has sent his word to reveal the, wor the, the will of God. What, what is God's will? What is God's desire for us? And so if you can understand the word of God and understand the promises of God, then those are irrefutable. God promised that. We can have that. It's his will. And, and I, like, I like what it says. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Well, that, the, the words there, ways and thoughts, actually correspond to wisdom and spiritual understanding. And so God's way and God's plan for you 
is always revealed in the Word of God. Now, again, I know there's a personal side to this where, well, is it the will of God for me to go to college? Or is it the will of God for me to change jobs? Is it the will of God for me to marry this person? I mean, those are not in the Word of God specifically, but yet I'm going to show you, you can also receive that uh, in your life as well. So, so listen, let me give you an example, okay? Over in Mark chapter 1, in verse 40, it says that a leper came to Jesus imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, now listen, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Now listen to what Jesus said to him. He said he was moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I am willing. In other words, the will of God was directly applied to this leper. And you say, well, that was because God was willing just to heal that leper. No, that's not true. Listen, God, Jesus was demonstrating what he was going to do through the cross in his earthly ministry. If you go read Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, where it says himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. If you back up to the verse before that, everybody that came to him was healed. Why? He was demonstrating what he was going to do on the cross. So when Jesus said, I will, it wasn't just because of the leper. It was because of the, the divine appointment to bring healing to God's people. So you can understand and realize if you go to the Word of God, you'll find out that God promised healing for us. We can, we can obtain healing. So you can have confidence that God will heal you. Why? Because it's the will of God. It's God's will to provide for you. Why? Well, Philippians tells us that God will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's a pretty good promise. Well, that promise tells me it's the will of God for God to provide for me, to meet my needs. And, and so you can be confident and know that even in a time of struggle financially, that God will meet your needs. I mean, I've proven this out over and over again because you can, you can deal with something in confidence you, because you can now know, God, you said you'd provide for me. Now, I'm asking you, and I know you hear me because it's your will to provide for me, and therefore I'll receive what I'm asking. God's will is amazing. He wa it's the perfect place to live your life because you can go to the Word of God under most circumstances of life and find the Word of God has the answer for you, and you can hold on to God's Word and you can pray and God can work His will in your life because it's in His Word. So that's good news. But now also, God has a personal will for your life. Now, I don't think people really take this seriously. And again, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. But I don't think people take this seriously enough. That God has a perfect will for your life. When I made Jesus the Lord of my life, God started working His will in my life. I began to yield to God. I began to pray. I began to seek God. And as I did, I found out about the Word of God and the promises in the Word that were His will. But I also found something else working. I found God by His Holy Spirit beginning to guide me and lead me. So that I, I had confidence. You know what? I'm walking with God and, and I'm walking in His will and I know, God, I know what God wants for my life. Now, now listen, don't, don't overreach with this, okay? Because some people think, well, if I don't have a word today, I'm not sure I'm in the will of God. That's not true. Let me give you an example. If my kids in my house, they're obeying me, and they're doing what I'm saying, they're in my will. I don't have to continually go pat them on the head and say, you're in my will, you're following me, you're my child. No, we're living life together. Now, if they get into disobedience or they don't take correction and they step away in, in a different direction, then I'm going to have to go to them and say, you're, you need correction. But the point is, most people 
can live in the will of God just by listening to the Holy Spirit in their lives. But, but you've got to know that there is a personal will for your life. God has purpose for you. He has a place for you. He has desires for you for your life. And I don't know about you, but I want what God wants for my life. You know why? Because I found out it's the best life going. I'm telling you, it's the greatest life going, knowing that I'm walking with God. Now, we have some exaggerated examples here that I'm going to show you. Uh, over in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, in, in verse 1, Paul made this statement. He said, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, now listen to this, by the will of God. Okay, just stop right there. By the will of God. In other words, Paul lived in confidence in his personal life because he knew he was in the will of God. He knew he was doing what God had called him to do. God, he was in the will of God. And that's good. That's awesome. That was Paul. He was an apostle. That's not you. That's not me. Okay, I, I could say to you today, you know, Pastor Sam, pastor at Life United, by the will of God. Why? Because I know I'm in the will of God. I know I'm here. But, but you could say the same thing. You could say, Joe, Joe Blow, electrician, by the will of God. And I don't know whether that you realize, but that can bring a lot of confidence. You know you're where God wants you. And, and, you know, listen, people, they get in rebellion. They get away from God. And, and I don't want to deal with that today. I'll do, deal with it at a different time. But they get away from God, and they lose that confidence because they know they're not really in the will of God. They're doing what they want to do, even though God's trying to nudge them in a different direction. All right? But let me just show you a couple of other examples. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, in verse 5, listen to what Paul said. Uh, specifically about the church in, in Macedonia. I like this. Verse 5 says, And not only as we hoped, but they, the church, gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. In other words, it was God's will for the church at Corinth to literally <clears throat> give themselves to serve and to help Paul. It was God's will. Now, you won't find that. I know you find it written in the Bible, but you won't find that written as a promise. But yet in that case, Paul said that was the will of God. And it was the will of God for them to give themselves. And it was the will of God for them to give their finances to help him in what he was asking them to do. So if you'll understand that that, 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 that framework of the will of God is a powerful place to live your life. Listen to what um, it says in Peter. And let me read you these, this real quick. Listen to what Peter said in, um, in verse 17 of, of 1 Peter chapter 3. Listen to this. For it is better, if it is the will of God, to suffer for doing good than doing e evil. Now, do you know, listen... I, I, don't, I know people don't like to hear this, but there are going to be times sometimes in people's lives where they, 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 they have to suffer for doing good. I, I could go into detail about this, but I've had many times where uh, I've, I've, I've had to take undue abuse and things spoken in my life and treated harshly just because I was a pastor, just because I was a Christian, you know, just because I was doing good. But, but it's interesting here that it says, uh, if you're doing something in the will of God, you, you, you may suffer good. So there's more to the will of God than what you think. Uh, if, you, if you know God's will for your life, uh, then no matter what the circumstances arise, you're going to be confident. Yeah, I know that I'm being accused. I know I'm being dealt with harshly. I know I'm, this is happening, I, yeah, but yet I know I'm in the will of God. Therefore, I have confidence because the will of God is not always just a beautiful world because if you're in the will of God, God's got things for you to do and there's always going to be opposition. So there you go. Now,
Here's something else about that, that I like about the, uh, the will of God in Colossians chapter 4. In verse 12, listen to this. It's very, this is really strong. Epaphras, who is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you. Always, now listen to this, always laboring fervently for you in prayer. He was an intercessor. Epaphras was an intercessor. Okay? That you may stand perfect and complete in the will of God. What was his prayer for, for the people? That they would walk in the will of God. That they would know the will of God. I pray that many times for people in the church and, and people that are struggling, that they, they would just know the will of God. And, and um, I, I like one translation. It says this, hoping that you will stand firm in the perfect achievement of all that is God's will for you. That's the prayer, okay? Our goal should be the perfect achievement of God's will for our lives here on earth. That, that ought to be our goal. Lord, what do you want? What do you want in my life? What do you not want in my life? You start yielding to the will of God, you'd be amazed at what God can, will say to you to help you with your life to walk in fulfillment. But let me back up just a minute to this verse because Epaphras was praying here about the will of God. And I, I, it just really stirred me up because um, many years ago, and I've told this story before, but many years ago, my dad, who at that point, at one point in his life, he was pretty much an alcoholic. He just, he couldn't keep a job, you know, and, and uh, he, he, um, he, he just was struggling in his life. Just couldn't, you know, he drank too much and caused him to lose his jobs and it was just very difficult, and he'd actually I'd, I had brought him home to Shreveport to try to take care of him, and got got him a little uh, apartment, and and uh, trying to help him, and and I'm praying, I'm crying out to God, God do something, God do something, God you got to do something. And one day the Lord spoke to me, and and what He spoke to me was to start praying Colossians chapter one over my dad, and just start declaring. That 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 um, that my my dad was going to walk worthy of the Lord and of uh, uh, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And I just started praying that. I just started declaring, God, He knows the will of God. He's going to walk worthy of you unto all pleasing. I even said it to him a couple of times, and he got mad at me and said, quit preaching to me. You know, I said, Dad, I'm not preaching to you. That's the Word of God. And I just kept, I just kept, that, that was my intercession for him, that he would know and understand the will of God and be fully pleasing to the Lord and be fruitful in every good work. And I had been praying for years for my dad. Nothing, nothing. Within a few months' time, I, well, it may not even have been, it may have been a month, six weeks, something like that. i never forget, I went to his, uh, his apartment and knocked on the door, and he said, come in. I went in, and he's sitting on the couch, and he's kind of got his hands in his head, kind of like this, and, and I said, you all right? And he said, he said, I got to quit drinking. And I said, Daddy, what you really need is to make Jesus the Lord of your life. He said, I know that. And he put his hand in mine, and we prayed a prayer right there, and he got saved. Now, that totally transformed my dad. Totally transformed him. You know what happened? He found out, hey, I can be pleasing to God. I can be fruitful in every good work. I, I can actually, listen, I love it. I can actually know the will of God for my life. Totally changed his life. I, I'm telling you. It works. Intercession. You want to intercede and pray for somebody, pray that they know, have a knowledge of the will, will of God and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. They be fruitful in all good works and increase in the knowledge of God. They know the will of God. They increase in the knowledge of God. They walk in the fullness of all that God has for them. You start praying that out of Colossians, you'd be amazed at what God can, can do with that 
because it's the Word of God. So the personal prayer of intercession is, is, is really is a, great, is a great part of that. But what I want you to see is this, how valuable it is to know that will, to know the will of God, to walk in the will of God, and let God's will work in your life. It, it, was, it was amazing to see the transformation in my dad just because of that praying that prayer. You might want to pray that over yourself. Uh, that many times, listen, many times when I'm praying, I'll just walk, the, I would walk the floor and say, thank you, Lord, for the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Thank you, Lord, for showing me your will. I mean, I, God will show you. He will guide you in it. And it's the greatest place in the world to live because it's a confident place. You know, there are lots of things you can do. There are lots of directions you can go. But there's one place that God's will is the perfect place for you. And, and sometimes, you know, you've got to strive for it. You've got to really find out what God wants. And I'm going to show you this in a minute. And, but I love what it says here. Uh, <clears throat> it says, and this is actually the Knox translation. It says that we would stand firm in the perfect achievement of all that is God's will for you. I want to achieve God's will for me. My whole life, I want that. Not just a portion of my life. I want my whole life. I want to know God. God. Lord, what's your plan today? What's your plan for me? What do you want me to do? You'd be amazed at how God can lead you. And then when you are faced with an adversity that the Word of God speaks to, you already know the will of God. Because you've been studying the Word and you know what God's Word says. And then you can stand on that. That's why we have a, um, a, a Word that, that's powerful. It's, it's a called a rhema Word. We can speak God's Word, speak the will of God over our lives and over what we, say, uh, what we do. So how do I achieve God's perfect will in my life? I, I'm going to just show you a few things that will help you with this. Um, from the Word of God that, that, that helped me, okay? So, and I know this sounds like we've already done it, redundant, but, but it's okay. First thing is, you need to pray for it. Pray. Listen, most of you know this, know, uh, this prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a prayer. Jesus was teaching them to pray. What was he teaching them to pray? It's Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. What was he teaching them to pray? That the will of God be done. Lord, I want God's will. I want it to be done in my life. Well, how can you accomplish that? Well, use Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. We talked about that. Pray that God will give you that wisdom. Here's another facet to this. It might help you because it has helped me um, because sometimes you don't know the will of God about a circumstance or a situation, but yet you still want to pray about it. Well, God gave us the Holy Spirit over in, in um, Romans chapter 8, verse 26. And listen to what it says. Likewise, the Spirit helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to pray. Now listen to this. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us, actually through us, because He doesn't do it on His own, with groanings which cannot be uttered in articulate speech. He's actually talking about praying in the Spirit here. Now listen to what it says in verse 27. He searches the hearts, knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. See, listen, sometimes there's going to be a weakness in your life where you don't know what to pray. You don't know how to pray. But I'm going to tell you, there's never a time that the Holy Spirit doesn't know the will of God or what to pray. And so that's why we can pray in other tongues. We can pray in the Spirit because our Spirit prays and the Holy Spirit connects with us. Listen, 
And when that happens, the Holy Spirit always prays the will of God. So even though you don't know what you're praying, the confidence you can have is, I'm praying the will of God, and God's going to show me what I need to do. You'd be amazed at how that works. The, the more time, listen, that you can spend praying in the Spirit in your life, the more the will of God is going to be revealed in your life. Because the Holy Spirit will take hold together with you, and He'll start working with you, and He'll start working in you, and you would be amazed at what God can do if you just do that and allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. I, I'm convinced, listen, I'm convinced in my own personal life, and I, I believe I can show you this from the Word of God, that you can actually pray the will of God for your future if you'll just stay praying in the Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to use you as a vessel to pray through, you would be amazed. I, I believe that where I'm sitting today, I believe that the, this church is a, a, in part a process of praying in the Spirit and praying out the will of God for the future. So when I meet it down the road, I'll know it. But that only comes if you take time to pray in the Spirit. Now, I know for some people that's a strange thought, even uh, beyond your understanding. But listen, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, I want to tell you something. You have the capacity to pray in the Spirit. <clears throat> Paul called it praying in the Spirit. He called it praying in other tongues. And when you do, according to Romans, you can actually pray out the will of God. And a lot of times when I don't know what the will of God is, I don't know where to go or how to approach it, I'll pray in the Spirit until it comes. And it always comes because the Holy Spirit searches the deep and the profound things of God, the will of God for us and reveals it to us. So you're without excuse with that. You can get, you can get the will of God in your life. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 says this, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Listen to this. That the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may know what the hope of His calling is and what are the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints. See, when you pray in the Spirit and you allow the Holy Spirit to work in you, then the eyes of your understanding, your spiritual understanding, I see, I know. And sometimes the will of God is, is don't do that, do this. I mean, I, I remember a number of times in my life when I thought the will of God was one way, but I just got a, a, a I call it an unction, that's what John called it, and to pray. And as I prayed in the Spirit, all of a sudden I got spiritual understanding that that's not really what God had. It was for a different purpose. Once you understand that, you'd be amazed at how God can work. I, I got to tell you this. I've told this testimony many, many times, but, but, but it'll help you understand this. Many, many years ago when we first started the church, I hadn't been going very long. I was praying one day, and I heard these words. I want you to go to Atlanta and start a church. Yeah, Atlanta, Georgia. Now, this church hadn't been going very long. And it really, it bothered me. Oh, my goodness, it bothered me. Wait a minute, what's going on here? I thought I'm supposed to be here. Now I'm hearing these words. And you say, well, it was the devil. No, it wasn't the devil. Just hang with me, okay? Listen. And so I actually was going to a convention that week. And so I, I talked to several different ministers Hey, I feel like the Lord may be leading me to go to Atlanta. What do you think? They were all 100%. Oh, I think it's great. I think it's God. I'll come help you. We'll get it. God will do something great. And, and I mean, and just different things. And, and so I come home and I tell Becky, I said, hey, I think we're supposed to go to Atlanta. And Becky said, well, the Lord didn't show me that. And so I set aside time to fast and pray and to seek the Lord about it. And I begin to pray in the Spirit. And as I begin to pray in the Spirit, and after a period of time, after several hours, to be honest with you, praying in the Spirit, listen, I heard the Lord say this to me. I mean, just as clear as a bell. I didn't call you to Shreveport 
Uh, no, it, no, wait a minute, let me back up. I didn't call you to Atlanta. I wanted you to see your heart for where you are. And so the Lord brought back to me what several of those men said and my reaction to it. Let me give you an example. One of the men said this. He said, Sam, you can add to the church in Shreveport, but if you go to Atlanta, man, you can multiply. And in my heart, I heard myself say, well, if I can multiply in Atlanta, I can multiply in Shreveport. And the Lord showed that to me. And he said, I just wanted you to see your heart for this city, for Shreveport and Bossier. And I wanted you to see your heart for this city. And this is where I've called you. And, and I mean, instantly I knew the will of God for my life. I knew that this is where I was going to live my life. I knew this is where I was going to be. I knew this is what God had for me to pastor you and to minister the word of God. I knew the will of God. And that came because I spent that time praying. Because see, if I hadn't prayed, I would have tried to figure it out on my own. And I would have missed the spiritual understanding of what God actually had for me. I would have missed the wisdom, the spiritual understanding of why God said that to me. And, I, you know, I could take you back in the Word of God. There are many places in the Word where God did things like that to help uh, someone with their understanding. So the, the point is pray, okay? Pray. Pray in the Spirit. You can know the will of God. Read the Word of God because that's where the promises are. That's where God tells us about what is his will? If you want to know the will of God for your life, go watch Jesus because Jesus was the express will of God on the earth. And so that's a great place for you just to see the will of God in action. Then read the promises in the epistles and you'd be amazed at how it can change uh, your life because you walk in the will of God. All right, so that was number one. You got to pray. The second thing is John, Jesus gave us an example in John chapter 4. Uh, the disciples had, had um, asked him, a, because they had all went, they'd gone to get some food, they came back with the food, and Jesus wasn't eating it, and, and they asked him, how come you're not eating? Did somebody else bring you some food? And in verse 34, Jesus said this, listen, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his work. Sometimes you've got to make the will of God a priority in your life. Jesus, the priority of doing the will of God was first in Jesus' life. Okay. It wasn't second, it wasn't third. He said, after dinner, I think I'll pray and I'll find the will of God or seek the will of God. No, he said, no, I'll, I'm going to find God's will first. So you've got to make seeking God, finding the will of God a priority in your life. It's important that you hear that, that you know that, that that's what God has for you. L let, me, let me show you this. It's a, it's a pretty long scripture, but I think it will help you over in 1 Peter because Peter explains this to us, okay? So listen to this, listen to this. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against your soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Now listen. Therefore, submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether king as supreme or governors or those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For now listen to this. He gave all those instructions of how to live, okay? For this is the will of God that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As free yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bondservants of God. Now, listen to me. In today's society, Man, we've got people speaking evil of, our, uh, of those that are in office. We're speaking evil of the president. And they're speaking evil of this and this one and that one and, there and all these different things. But I want to tell you something. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. 
Okay? And, and I, hey, I've, I've been guilty of doing this myself, and the Lord dealt with me about it. What you've got to understand is that, that Peter gave these instructions because it was the will of God. So you can do all you want and say it's the will of God, but if you're doing contrary to what the Word of God says, then it's not the will of God. And, if, and you've got to know, hey, I am free, but I'm not going to use my liberty as a cloak for vice, but I'm going to be a bondservant of God. I'm going to do the will of God. And go read it for yourself. Do the will of God. And once you do that, live the best of your ability to the will of God. You'd be amazed. Hey, just go read the Word of God and, and find the phrases, the will of God, and say, I'm going to do that. That, that. That's a good start in your life right there. All right. So now, number three. Listen to what Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17 says. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Make it your business to know what the will of the Lord is. Now, I just read you a set of scriptures over in 1 Peter. Go meditate on those. Make it, listen to me, make it your business to know, okay, I understand that's the will of God. And then the next thing is, I'm going to do what the will of God says to do. So it's your responsibility. Paul wrote and said, your responsibility is to understand the will of God, not your feelings, not what somebody else thinks, not what you think, not what your opinion says, but what does God say? And then make up your mind, I'm going to do the will of God that's revealed to me in the Word of God. I'm going to understand it, and I'm going to make it my business to know the will of God for every area of my life. You start focusing on that, and you'd be amazed at how many things start dropping off when you do that. So make up your mind you're going to do that. All right, number four. Here's another one, okay? I've just got a few more here. Listen to this. Ephesians 6, 6 says this, talking about people doing uh, in the workplace, so to speak. He said, don't do it with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ. Now listen, doing the will of God from the heart. Doing the will of God from the heart. Listen, you have to do God's will because you want to serve God. You want to put God first in your life. You want to make Him uh, the, the, the main focus of your life. And when you do that, then you're, you're not going to do something just to be, make people feel good. You're going to do something because it's the will of God and you're doing it from the heart. So don't get trapped. Make it your business to know what God's will is. Do it from the heart not to please men. Now, listen to this next one. John chapter 5, it's real similar, but John chapter 5, verse 30, Jesus gives us this instruction. Listen to what he said from his own life. I can do of myself, I, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. My judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Now, I want you to listen to me. I'm going to get into this in, in later, at a later time, okay? Listen. You've got to make up your mind. Your will is not always God's will. I know this may sound strange to you, but even Jesus' will had to yield to God's will. You remember in Geth at Gethsemane? Not my will be done, but your will be done. Jesus said, my goal is to always do the will of the Father who sent me. Not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. So you got to know there are going to always be times when you're going to want to do something. You're going to want to say something. You're going to want to act a certain way. You're going to want to go in a certain direction because you want to do it. But that doesn't mean that it's God's will. And see, you're going to lose your confidence if you start making those kind of decisions and you don't want to do that. Okay, La last one. That, that, that one basically is you've got to seek the will of God. That's what Jesus said. I'm going to do God's will, not my will. Okay, so now listen. 
Once you understand what I've shared with you today, listen to what the Word of God says. I'm going to read it again in, in, in 1 John. Listen to what it says. Verse 14. This is the confidence that we have in Him. If we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Man, I'm glad that He hears me. And I'm, I'm not talking about hears me like He audibly hears me. He's listening. He's receiving because if He hears me, because I've asked according to His will, whatever I ask, I know that I have the petitions that I have asked Him. What a, what a confident way to live your life. And basically what you're doing is you're doing it by walking in the will of God. And it brings confidence. Father, I pray right now over every person under the sound of my voice. Father, I thank you right now that you stir us up to walk in your will in every area by your Holy Spirit. Father, that this revelation of walking in your will fulfills every heart's desire that we have because we know that you know us and you know your perfect plan for us. And I thank you, Father, for your working your will in our lives. And Lord, we appropriate your will where your word says it and we listen to the voice of your spirit where it doesn't say it. And thank you that we can be guided to live in the fullness of your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I trust you got something out of this tonight. Uh, Alexis is going to come and share with you uh, some good news about some things going on. And I believe you're going to be blessed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So good, Pastor Sam. Thank you. Uh, listen, I'm not going to keep you long. I believe that you got something out of this message. I believe that it blessed you, and I encourage you, share it with someone. I don't know about you, but I don't think that there's enough God on our internet. I don't think that there's enough good news on our internet, and God doesn't just have a will for my life and for your life. He has a will for everyone, and so you can be a part of that. Share some good news. Share this message Talk about what God is doing in your life, and let's get some God on the internet. Amen? Really quickly before you go, I want to touch on a very important next step. Uh, we've been so blessed by all the guests we've been seeing over the past few weeks, but we want to get you connected, and you can do that by going through Discover. Discover is all about uh, what we believe here at Life United, but it also focuses specifically on the special gifts placed inside of you to help you uh, find your purpose and make a difference. And we're all about making a difference here. So if you've been coming for a little while and you're ready to serve, you're ready to be a part of what's going on, I encourage you, go through Discover. You can go through Discover online, at home, in your jammies, or you can come here in person and go through Discover in our brand new fancy Discover room. If you've seen the new Discover room and you like us, let, and you like it, excuse me, let us know in the chat, all right? That's all I have for you tonight. Remember that our Powerless series is going on. We encourage you, invite somebody with you this weekend. Thank you so much for tuning in to the message tonight. We love you. We're praying for you, and we will see you this Sunday. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church. 